Did you know that you can debug or inspect crash dump files in IDA? Basically, the crash dumps that you create from the task manager or process explorer or when a process crashes, you can seamlessly uh, inspect the crash dump and work with them with IDA. Let me show you how real quick. So, <clears throat> suppose we have Notepad and that's going to be my 64-bit process where I'm going to take the crash dump. So I'm going to run uh, Explorer uh, Task Manager and simply locate the Notepad process and uh, create a memory dump. That should be enough. Let's uh, move this one. Move it to C temp memory dumps. I put it here, Notepad. Now, what we have to do, since what we did is a crash dump for a 64-bit process, which is Notepad, we have to open either 64 to inspect it. First things first, um, I, s I already set up the symbol pass, so that's useful to have the anti-symbol pass set NT. For example, in my case, I set the NT symbol pass to uh, cache it in my temp folder and, and use the public symbol server. Now that we have the symbol pass set up, that's the one step you do in your environment variables in Windows. Now we have a crash dump file. We can simply run the appropriate IDA for it. So since this is a 64-bit uh, crash dump, I'm going to run IDA64.exe. And that's IDA. So all you have to do is simply open the crash dump. Now that the crash dump is uh, loaded into IDA, IDA automatically detects that it should be treated as a crash dump file. <clears throat> For now, we're going to leave everything as it is. Also, I'll show you other, uh, other stuff we can do. Uh, this is only supported on Windows, by the way. So there are other ways we can work with crash dumps on non-Windows. But for now, once we, once we open the file, we get a small warning from IDA that IDA doesn't know how to get the memory map uh, directly from the crash dump. It's OK. Uh, and now we let it load. And when it finishes uh, loading, we should be able to interface with the crash dump. So here, uh, first time downloading the symbols, basically. But uh, that's the only holdup, just downloading the symbols. Once this is finished, it will be ready for us. So now we're ready. So here, for example, let me close some windows that I don't need. I'm going to keep the modules list and the disassembly view. Uh, clear the screen. Notice here I have the Windy bug command line interpreter. So all I have to do is simply start interfacing with it. For example, we can type R to check the registers, double click on the numbers. And for example, I am here. That's at, at, for this thread. We can type tilde and see the threads. And let's, uh, for example, display the call stack of all threads. And let's see what happens. So here, this is all the call uh, code stacks for in individual threads. We can, for example, double click on the addresses, on the return addresses, and so on. Now, since we're working with a crash dump, we want more information, not just from notepads. We, we might want to get more information from other process, from other DLLs and so on. But uh, let's suppose we also want uh, to work with kernel 32. So I'm going to locate kernel 32 in the module list, right click, and load debug symbols. Once I do that, I have proper debug symbols. I just started analyzing the whole module. And it will give us a lot of context. And this crash dump and this view is for that operating system version and environment that we took the crash dump for. So if you're running on another Windows, different updates and so on, this is exactly for that crash dump. So now, for example, we have we're inspecting current 32. We can uh, we can decompile and so on. Um, same for Notepad. We can say right click, uh, uh, jump to module base, for example. And we have the text section here. So all those segments are all the segments for Notepad. We have unnamed segments that don't belong to modules. So for example, let's say we're looking for shell code, basically. Uh, memory, executable memory that does not belong to a module. We can filter for, press Ctrl F, type debug. 
for all the bark segments. These are temporary segments, allocated segments, whether they're heap or virtual, uh, virtual memory. And we can sort by X here. If we're lucky in that uh, memory dump, we might find executable bits. So we don't have any, any X debug segments in that case. <coughs> so uh, other things we can do, for example, if we are interested uh, in, we can work all the time in this, uh, in this scenario in the crash dump. But at any point, if we want to bring in something for further analysis and stop debugging, we can always right click on a module and say analyze module. When we do that, this IDA will simply copy this into the database. But before doing that, let me simply stop and show you what happens if we stop debugging right now. So we started from a crash dump, we're in a debugging session and we can stop. Once we stop, IDA will say we don't have any, any, any segments right now are you sure? Uh, do you want to take memory uh, memory snapshot for now? I don't want to take any memory snapshot. Confirm that we're exiting. Um, do you want to take snapshot? No. And now, either we'll clean up and we're back to an empty database. It's fine. We can always uh, restart again. And we can also check here, options, debugger options, sorry, uh, debug process options. And this is our process. We are running a crash dump. So let me show you. We can re-enter that session here. Simply run again. And once, uh, once it runs, we're back where we started in the same exact crash dump state. Now, if we want to work with uh, share this database only, not the crash dump, with uh, colleagues, if we want to share this uh, database with colleagues, we have to convert the crash dump to a full IDA database. So for that, we can take a memory, memory snapshot. Uh, so I'm going to go to the debugger menu and say take memory snapshots. Now here I have an option. Take for a current segment or all segments. Really, it's up to you what you want to do. So for now, one step at a time, I'm going to simply analyze uh, Notepad. So this is a targeted... Uh, snapshot just for this module in particular. We could have done this for other debug segments. So I'm going to take Notepad and, and a bunch of debug segments just for uh, testing purposes. So we can right click, say Analyze Module. Either we copy the whole module uh, to the database. And uh, let's open the segments window, find some dummy debug uh, uh, segments. So this one doesn't have anything. Okay, let's take this one and we can say take memory snapshots, the current segment only. And so I took Notepad and all its segments and a dummy segment. Now if we stop debugging, what I have in my database is, uh, is two seg a bunch of segments. We should have the debug segment and all the segments of Notepad. This is the header. We can rename it Alt S and uh, call it header. We can go back here, for example, call the text and so on and so on. We have a clean mini uh, view of the uh, of this database. Now, what we can do is uh, work with it, annotate it, and later if we discover we need more memory from the crash dump, it's okay as long as we have the process options pointing to Notepad and the debugger is WinDebug. In that case, we can always rerun, and we are back into live view where we can inspect the memory and maybe take more snapshots for uh, for our consumptions. So uh, when this is uh, over, we all we have to do is uh, continue inspecting the memory, and if we want to analyze another module, load PDBs, we can do that. So. For this one, let's say for the second case, I'm going to, let's say, dump, uh, load, uh, take the whole current 32. So first I'm going to uh, take load the debug symbols, and then I'm going to analyze this again. And now we took a snapshot of kernel. We, if we stop debugging, now I have, if I press Ctrl S for segments list, now I also have current 32 and uh, notepad. But as we said, we can grow the database 
as much as we want, bringing on more and more pieces. So now, if I want, I can take a snapshot, say uh, snapshots of notepad debug and kernel 32. So now, if we go to the uh, snapshot directory, this is the standalone crash dump file. So now this is the crash dump with all the current 32 symbols that we captured. You can share this uh, with colleagues running on uh, Linux or Mac. They don't need a WinDebug anymore. Don't even need to have any debuggers selected at all in that case. But if you share the, the crash dump, then they can actually rerun and have a live view of that crash, crash dump. So that's it for working with crash dumps and IDA. There are other scenarios where we can work with uh, crash dumps and IDA, but I'll leave that for future videos. If you like this video, please leave a like, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.